Hello, everybody. Welcome to this double review for the Power Bomb Project. I am one of your hosts, Daniel, joined by my other two hosts. Hey, it's Berman. Hey, Chris. So, today we're going to be talking about the biggest double feature in history Barbenheimer. Now, me and Chris saw both. Berman only saw Oppenheimer. So, we will be having timestamps in the description below, everyone, for the Barbie spoiler free half, then the spoiler half, then the Oppenheimer spoiler, no, spoiler free half, and then Oppenheimer spoilers. So, all four of those timestamps, look for them in the description below. That will be very helpful through this video. So, without further ado, let's begin into the first film, Barbie. So, Barbie is a comedy film directed by Greta Gerwig, and I kind of feel like it's honestly challenging to talk about in some senses. Now, I'm going to have to watch what I say here. I understand how this is a film that can resonate with some people out there, and if you gain something positive from this movie, I think that's wonderful. However, it's not for me. I will give credit and say, like, the costume choices and set designs and all that stuff were pretty much nailed. Like, like when you visually think about Barbie, it was pretty much nailed. Ryan Gosling was definitely the star of the overall show for me. I think he did a great job. He killed it, especially with a specific musical number that happens in the movie. And the acting from everyone else, I think, is pretty much just passable. Margot Robbie does solid as Barbie. I can't take that away from her. But yeah, I didn't really care too much for many of the other roles involved in this movie. Now, there are just too many issues for me to call this a good movie. And maybe you can argue that I'm too critical of films. Maybe I take films too seriously. However, I believe that not to be the case here. I don't think the story is good. As a matter of fact, I think it's kind of stupid. And without diving into spoilers, I'll say it's stupid because it feels like the point this movie tried to make failed to really make that point. I also believe that this might be a bit much to, you know, for families. Like, you would think Barbie would be the kind of film you can take your children to. I don't know if you could really take your children to Oh, come to this on, film. Daddy. You're acting like it are cussing like every 10 to 20 minutes. You stop the game. <laughs> I mean, they talk about penis and vagina. I don't or, know if that's really like, something I'd want to hear. Oh, come on, dude. Kid. They know what that is. I mean, I'm just pointing it out, bro. I, know, I think this isn't really that great of a film to show your children. Just my personal opinion. Don't don't be a coward. Show your children this don't, movie. Don't listen to Daniel who's being a coward. I'm not being a coward. He's just afraid to talk about penises and vaginas. I'm not. I'm just saying. I don't know if I want to put a six-year-old child into a theater with a film talking about penis and vagina. Well, I think that's kind of disturbing. Well, they're going to have to learn but about it eventually, man. Yeah, they'll learn about it eventually, but let's, I'd rather let that be up to them rather than up to me. But let's, let's not have that conversation. Listen, right man, here. it's better to see at the Barbie movie than some random guy at the park, man. We don't want that. All right, fine, I guess. I don't even know how to respond you to you right now. You don't want fucking old Gary at the park schmicking his meat and just be like, yo, look at this shit. No, that's not <laughs> safe for your children. Go watch it in Barbie. It's safe, Jesus. though. Now, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> to get back to the point, I expected the film similar to Enchanted, like the 2000s movie Enchanted, if you remember that. Just a fun, harmless movie that families can see, but keep in mind, if you're going to see this film, you're going to get the message of this film shoved down your fucking throat. Every joke in the film features really bad pop culture references, how the toys aren't real, or other stuff. Just keep in mind, every man in the movie is dumb, or a loser, or an asshole. I feel for the families who will see this Barbie logo get tricked by the PG-13 rating, because I guarantee you most children aren't even going to understand a film like this. Overall, I will dive more into the spoilers, and that's where I'll really get into what I dislike even more. But to keep it short, sweet, and simple... I don't despise this movie, but clearly I am not the target audience I never expected to be, but 
it, it was pretty abundantly clear to me while watching this. So overall, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Damn, that's a bit harsh, Daniel. I actually feel it's quite the opposite. I think it's a very fun time for adults and children. And it, yeah, I can understand it's not the type of demographic for you and me, but it's very girl power. I don't think it's harmful in any way, but there are some issues with the characters, seen as they're kind of generic. And again, Ken is probably pretty much the, the savior of this whole damn film. And yeah, the pop culture stuff isn't that funny. But I personally didn't find it offensive, and honestly, you can bring your kids to this. It's not like they haven't seen anything worse in like any other film or adaptation of Barbie. I think it's very girl power ish. So if you like those kind of movies, or you just like okay comedies, I personally give it like a seven. I liked it for what it was. At least it wasn't like a cash grab or anything like that, like other shitty kids' movies. I see. Let's see. Now, do you feel comfortable diving into the spoilers? Yeah. All right, let's talk about some of these issues, and, and you can tell me whether you agree or disagree. Okay. Now, now I truly feel more comfortable going into what I disliked. If I had a dollar every time this film said patriarchy or matriarchy, I think I'd be a billionaire. Like, this movie made me want to never hear the words patriarchy or matriarchy ever again. That's true. But like, that's a good start. Now... This next point, I think, is very credible. Barbie as a main character is supposed to be likable, but in reality, Barbie as a character is an absolute narcissist. She considers nobody's feelings from start to finish except her own. And even when she apologizes to Ken towards the end, it doesn't matter. Ken copes with his I Am Knuff hoodie, which admittedly looks pretty nice, but that's, that's it. Like, from start to finish, this is all about her, and she doesn't learn to care about anyone else, really, except for her. Like, everyone around her are, is doing all of this for her. Oh, yeah, I mean, she's the bimbo Barbie. Come on, man. But no, I, I get what you mean, though. She doesn't really learn her lesson throughout the movie, and if anything, it just kind of patronizes Ken. And I, I know we're not supposed to take it this movie this seriously since it's like a child's movie, but you can I can agree with you definitely with the patriarchy stuff, because that shit... I know it is valid, but, like, realistically, I don't think, like, 13 or... Or, like, the main character, she's, like, 13 or 14, is realistically going to talk like that. Or, like, kids her age. I could be wrong about this, but it just was kind of cringe to hear. I'm like, dude, a fucking yeah. adult wrote that. I, a teenager doesn't talk like this. Maybe they do. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, I think this is the one we're going to disagree on. Despite Ryan's hilarious performance, Ken is pretty much an absolute joke and an idiot who has barely any comprehension skills whatsoever. And? I, I understand he's a toy, but Jesus Christ, they really could not have made this guy more of an idiot. idiot. His feelings in rejection are already ridiculous enough. But it gets truly ridiculous when he wants to take over Barbie with his own kingdom within a few minutes of learning what the real world has to offer. And he does this because, get this, he thought the patriarchy was about horses. <laughs> There's not one guy in this movie I do. who has decent morals or isn't an asshole. And if they aren't assholes, then they're losers like Alan. What the fuck? There's no shit about Alan. <laughs> What the fuck did Alan do? You just try to everyone, live his life and get a bar and fucking assholes to him for no reason. <laughs> everyone literally calls everyone literally makes fun of the guy for the out the entire film. Listen, listen and man. He's the only, what? what? Alan, Alan fucking killed the can, alright, in the movie. So you're not gonna be splatter his name and covering him dirt acting like he didn't do anything in this film. He murdered a dude in cold blood because he was trying to leave. All right, sure. This movie should be about Alan yeah. and how he doesn't belong to society because the kids and Barbies don't accept him for who he is. Uh, was Alan? Can we just can we just accept there's no such thing as a halfway decent straight guy in this entire movie? No, it doesn't exist. No, that's true. Like Alan is, is a gay character. Like I'm not even trying to get like um, go there. Like you, I'm c completely fine with anyone being whoever they want to be. But isn't it just very strange there's not one straight guy in the entire film who isn't a fucking joke or an asshole? Well, I'll, I'll, that's true. 
But I don't think, again, I think it's more towards like the female audience to be fair because i know there's some movies where the guys are like usually in charge and the, the women are kind of stupid but i i know what you mean in this movie in particular like it's kind of a bad showing for guys and at the end i kind of thought the ken and barbies would kind of accept each other but no the kids yeah, are they, they kinda, they did. so it's kind of a yeah. fucked up message for like little boys or like you know men watching it but again i understand if this is not the type of movie for us more towards female power or whatever which is fine but after a while it was kind of cringe to keep hearing over and over and over i just i just find it very absurd that barbie gets sexually assaulted within the first 60 seconds of her being in the real world that is absurd that that was even written i'm I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna say. It. I'm gonna sh- no, it's it's fine. It's not fine. I mean, it's stupid. But come on, you know they had to put in some like dirty jokes here and there. And to be fair, she confronts the guys and tells them we don't have penises or vaginas, so you can't do anything to us. I I, I guess. <laughs> Again, I think you're proving my point that that this isn't a good film to, for families to watch. That's not. It's, you stop the cap, right? Everyone in the audience is laughing. <laughs> I was having a good time. I think you're just looking too deep into it, man. I don't think I'm bringing up legitimate good points. And I don't know. I think I, I feel justified in the way I feel. You, you know what? And, you know what the worst part is about this movie, Daniel? What? That Ken Lan was given up in like five minutes. That's bullshit. Ken Lan was a paradise. And if the kids would have <laughs> just took in the red pill and rised up, it could have been perfection. Yes, I guess so. And Ryan Gosling saved this movie. How dare you insult him? He was literally the best part of this movie. I didn't insult him. I think his performance is great. But he plays a bubbling idiot, and I think even he would agree with that. But that's Ken. Ken doesn't even have a personality. He's just a fucking male Barbie. I, I, I guess so. Now, in this next point, maybe you can agree with me. The long rant the mother went on in terms of what a woman should be. I think was very unnecessary. Listen, truth is, it doesn't matter who you are. Be whoever you want to be. Like, no one gives a shit. I'm sorry. Like, just be who you want to be, and we'll all respect you. We don't want, we don't care about women looking a certain, we don't give a fuck. We don't. Like, be who you are and be comfortable with who you are, and don't give a shit what anyone else has to say about you. How about that? That's true, but honestly, Danny, you know some people aren't like that. You know, there are people that do think that way. But Right, like they have to villainize a certain group of people in order to make themselves feel justified. Yeah. And it's... it's a... Oh, wait, what? Oh, no, no, I was just going to say, like, it, it's a nice message in the movie, but again, you have to kind of show, like, the main character kind of learns from her actions, like, oh, I was doing this all wrong, but you don't really get that. But you do get yeah, an important there's... message at the end of the movie, Daniel. I guess, but let, 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 you know what, let's talk about that message. Does the film really deliver the message in a proper way? And if so, what, what message did you truly gain from this film? I, I The true message is go to your gynecologist and get yourself checked up. Yep, that's a lifeline, folks. <laughs> that's how the movie ends. <laughs> that's yeah, that, movie. That, that is actually how it ends. Uh, dude, you gotta admit that was kind of funny. I mean, yeah, it beats the whole purpose of the movie. But that last joke at the end kind of just nailed it of how right. stupid it no. was. I mean, I, I guess. It's just so dumb, I, like, you know. It's it's hard for me to actually just sit down and, like, I don't know, ignore all this stuff, though. It really is. I, I, it really I can't. Is. I, I thought it was all right. It was fun. Now, I mean, I get it. This next point, I think, is definitely, I only have a few left, and then we'll be done talking about Barbie here. Let's talk about her daughter. You know, the, the Barbie owner's daughter. Yeah. Sasha, whatever her name was. What a brat. Holy fucking shit. What a brat. Talk about a character who has absolutely abysmal writing. She tries to be the movie's anti-Barbie mouthpiece. However, comes across as nothing more than an absolute spoiled entitled brat. Maybe if there was more to dive into when it comes to the mother and daughter's relationship then maybe I would give a shit about this brat, but I don't. No, and if anything, she seems like more of an afterthought, because again, the best movies, I'm, I'm sorry, the best part of the movie was 
you know, Ken and Barbie just interacting, and she was more of an off girl. Oh, we also forgot to mention that uh, Will Ferrell was in this for like five seconds, even though he was just playing well, as no, a businessman. Gave Will Ferrell too much screen time, if anything. He likes tickle fights. That's what I learned about his character. He likes taking advantage of younger girls and not in a creepy way, as he would say. See? They acknowledge you did. <laughs> so, I don't even know what to say about this film anymore, man. Oh, you know what? Let's just let's just send it on on this on this final point. Now, the Barbie and the daughter, stereotypical Barbie and the daughter, are probably the two worst characters in the entire film for me, for sure. Margot Robbie again; she does a great job in terms of acting, but I cannot stand her Barbie character. It sucks. But let's get to the real final point. I can't help but think that there is no true connection. Between between the dolls and the humans outside of the plot needing it. Like, it doesn't naturally work. Yeah, like I, I can see that. I personally believe this film will do more harm than good when it comes down to it, in terms of, like, the you know effects on society this movie could genuinely have. And I know it might sound, like, very over the top, but it, I genuinely see it that way. I think this movie does more harm than good. Yeah, I think it's okay for what it is. It's probably going to be one of those things where it's just a summer flick, and I don't think nothing more is going to come of it. Like, there's they could make a movie uh, like very woman powerty, but just write it a little better. But it it was you like can, a good stepping stone for this kind of direction. You can have a woman power movie without victimizing every single character. No, we can't do that, Daniel, because there'll be no plot. We need to have a victim. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just wrap it up on this note. The greatest thing about Barbenheimer is that you got two films that are incredibly successful and both are resonating with people. Barbie having the highest opening weekend numbers in 2023 when Mario also came out this year, that's a fucking achievement, despite how I feel on this film. And then it felt like Oppenheimer wasn't marketed at all till like the last month of the of you know the marketing. And it ended up having the biggest opening weekend for a rated R film in four years since 2019's Joker. Both have done such great for the business, I cannot help but be happy for the industry, even with the current strikes going on. And at the end of the day, the financial success both films are seeing is more important than anything. This is the fourth highest grossing weekend in cinema history. That is amazing for the industry. Yeah couldn't agree more but it's kind of a shame too because once these two movies are over and maybe like the tnt movie i, I don't think there's anything else until the worker strike is kind of over that that i'm aware yeah. of yeah well, i'm gonna i'm gonna give blue beetle a shot i'm gonna give blue beetle a yeah, shot yeah you guys can review that that shit looks generic as hell i'm good you, that this is how i know you don't care about your, your people man fuck my people man <laughs> i'm not watching it because he's bad to get that's stupid I want to watch. I know, I'm, 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 no, I'm, I'm just saying. No, no. It, it will be a good movie. It will be a good movie. It's gonna be. I, I have a few. This is literally just Captain America again. Don't say that. This is literally <laughs> just Captain America again. No, they just they disagree. They just have Mexican characters to appeal to me, and I'm not fucking having it because I already know this movie is gonna be generic as hell. But what about Barbie itself? Did you say you gave it a five, right, or a four? I gave it a four. Yeah. Oh, well, I gave it a seven. So you divide that and you get a number because I'm not doing that well, shit. That's fair. <laughs> the, I guess our average is a five and a half. I think so, that's fair. Yeah. So that was Barbie, ladies and gentlemen. We definitely each have our own points and hope you kind of enjoyed this. I wouldn't really call it a debate, but kind of like a bit of a exchange on the whole Barbie movie. So we'll be back shortly. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, for our second half of this. We are going to be talking about Oppenheimer now. And it sounds kind of funny that, you know, we're going to be doing a spoiler-free and spoiler section, considering that these are just real events, and, you know, it's kind of just like, how can you really sugarcoat these events? But I'll do my best. Let, let's do this. We'll do this shit. Now, this movie is based off a true story during World War II, starring Killing Murphy as J. Robert Oppenheimer, 
about the making of the atomic bomb. This is directed by Christopher Nolan, one of the most critically acclaimed directors today. And this movie has quite the star-studded cast. And I'll just say a few other names outside of the star. You've got Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, Florence Pudge, and they're also serving major roles in this film. So Christopher Nolan has made masterpieces like The Dark Knight, Interstellar, other critically acclaimed films like Dunkirk, Inception. I could really talk about it, but I'm not going to. This would mark Christopher Nolan's 12th movie as a director. And overall, I think this is an amazing movie. Every actor does a great job with the roles they're given. Matt Damon as General Leslie did great as he does in most projects he's involved with. He was also great in Air earlier this year. So Matt Damon's just having a great year in general. Robert Downey Jr. hasn't really had a major role since Iron Man. And that'll probably be Robert Downey Jr.'s most iconic role. However, I think he did an excellent job here. He made me believe in the Louis Strauss portrayal that he was playing here. Especially in the final act of this film. Florence had quite an intriguing role as Jean, a.k.a. Oppenheimer's commie mommy. Jean's story here is simply tragic. Uh, there's no way to really sugarcoat that. Uh, Emily Blunt as Kitty was quite sour, quite a cruel uh, person Kitty seemed to be based off of this, but Emily Blunt did a great job. Similar to Robert Downey Jr., she played someone who was very unlikable from start to finish. But guess what? None of these people are supposed to be very likable. That's the entire point of this film. And if you're knocking the film for having unlikable characters, sorry that the truth hurts you. That's all I can really say. Now, yeah. Finally, the star of it all. Killian Murphy played a challenging role here. J. Robert Oppenheimer was a controversial figure. You might think Oppenheimer might be viewed as a hero in this film for creating the atomic bomb, but I think this film did an excellent job in telling a story about a man who had a goal to achieve and his achievements led to guilt. Massive, massive consequences, repercussions. We all know what happened. Now, I get Killian goes in interviews and says he hates praise. Well, too fucking bad, because I got this to say. Killian Murphy was such a standout here. He might have had one of the best lead performances I have ever seen. There are very, very few on the level of Killian in terms of acting. Very, very few. You also get side uh, actors or side characters from actors like Rami Malek, Josh Peck, and others who appear for only a scene or two, but that's honestly just enough. Every single person in this story has their purpose. It's simple, really. Now, there are some shots people may see as distracting, but I think the shots actually add on to the film. It takes you to Oppenheimer's imagination. And to keep in mind, there are two perspectives throughout the film. There's the one in color and the one in black and white. The one in color is through Oppenheimer's perspective. The one in black and white is from Louis Strauss' perspective. Now, the final thing I'll mention is there is this one scene in the third act. And it might have been one of the most breathtaking scenes I've ever seen, in a way. It did a better job at kind of going for a horror genre in 60 seconds than 99% of horror films could ever possibly do today. Because most horror films, guess what? They fucking suck. Now, overall, I can continue. But... This was one of the best films of 2023. Go watch it if you haven't already. I'm going to talk about more in the spoiler half. But overall, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Yeah, for me, it's been... I probably been, It's going to be my favorite movie of this year. I would say of the bad. I love history movies or anything that was related to that history. And this is so like so good. Like, it's, it's dramatic. It does Betrayal works is so good, and I would say that that uh, Murphy will hundred percent get the, the what's it called the sorry the year the best actor of the year. I would say right off the bat, I, he has the he had the best like it shows how good he can portray emotion so goddamn well. It's so easy to get think like oh this is actually the real Oppenheimer, and I gotta say 
congrats to the uh, the casting guy because he casted the person looking exactly like Oppenheimer. If you search up a picture of Oppenheimer and then next to put a picture of Murphy next to him, they are identical identical twins. Like they look like doppelgangers. They look so crystal clear, look exactly like each other. It's so good how they did this and definitely Matt Damon did a great job. He had a good humor side of it, but he had a very fun he had a very good strict side to him, very interesting. I gave, I got another it was so interesting to see like when he was in the uh, on the chair, like sorry on what was it called in, a, in that room talking to the table of like the lawyers and stuff, kinda of getting pretty much set up really. You got set up getting this it was so interesting. Yeah, just I was like um but I think the main thing that was interesting was there's a guy, his name is Taylor. He is a great character. How, how he is, is good fun to see him. There's a bunch of other characters I'm going to talk more when the spoilers. I did just say one tiny thing, but that's just you see in the trailers. But I guess say the, um, the guy's name, Jean, uh, the, the woman that plays Jean, she did that. That was a great job in portraying a very tragic person makes perfect sense perfect very good perfect robbie johnny jr i would yeah he did a great job portraying this type of character and he i would say he could be definitely in the supporting role actor like he'd be he'd be probably the best supporting role actor uh, nominated or like just win it because that he was doing a great job i would say there's it's easy to not to be uh talk about this too much but i would say about too that this is, movie is super accurate too watching a documentary of this whole thing too after the movie it's 95 percent, 96 percent to the base to the dot it's perfectly right on there it's like a nine nine sorry nine and a half for me man it's probably one of the best movies of the year for me and i'm honestly in the same boat too um, but this isn't much of a spoiler if if you're the type of moviegoer that's kind of expecting this to be like action packs, this is you know taking place during war times, you're not gonna really get it. Like, I would say like the first thirty minutes or so is pretty action packed, but from the remaining two hours, it's mostly like people talking and dialogue, which I don't mind for a bit because it's really cool learning about the history of like the people inventing this this type of bomb and to kind of go into depth how it's done. But if you don't like those type of movies, I'm just probably gonna let you know you're not gonna like this movie. Because if you expect this to be like action packed or maybe like a little dialogue here and there, this is not going to be your cup of tea. But if you like historical documentaries, this is pretty damn accurate. Like Berman and Danny were talking about it. So that's all I can really say. And this movie is excellent. So I'll give it a 9 2. Now let's talk about spoilers. Now we're kind of just going to go a bit all over the place and be open about this. Um, what, what I really want to dive into first is, you know, the whole scene how. Oppenheimer is just kind of being like congratulated by all these people for you know the success of the test and everything and then he has like this scene and you know how they're he's kind of like hearing all these sounds he's it's all becoming a bit too much for him you know to really take in all the guilt all the regret and you know just everything that comes along with it and I feel like that scene even though it wasn't really intentionally made to be that way I feel like that perfectly captured what it feels to have anxiety like it felt it felt incredibly accurate right there that scene you know it's like a perfect depiction of what anxiety truly feels like in sense yeah i say that same thing it was it, it's a great it's a pretty great scene to capture how people kind of think about anxiety i think that's a good good scene to show and yeah and it it's kind of sad too because he just realized like oh my god what have I just created? Because, you know, he obviously has to lie to the public. Like, it was, like, a necessary evil. Because Oppenheimer's like, holy shit. I just invented, like, the ultimate of means of destruction, right? While all these people are cheering for him, he's, like, he's starting to realize, like, oh, wait. This isn't going to end wars. This is going to be continuous. They're going to keep developing this. And I kind of just started this domino chain where it's just, like, like it's never going to stop. They're going to keep making bombs, what I'm doing. And it's kind of sad, too, because he has to lie, too, because... You know, during this time, obviously, if you weren't pro-American, they were labeled as a communist, and that's a very much a way to, like, set your life apart, and you would be sent to jails and be punished for having, like, different ideals during that time. So, in my place, that is just kind of horrorish and kind of sad to think that, oh, my God, 
I regret everything that I've done to bring to this country an Oppenheimer's like point of view. Yeah. It's and pretty sad actually. It is. It definitely is. It's honestly one of the best scenes I think I've ever seen in a film. Like it really just it's something crazy. And you know what else like baffles me? Well, the people calling the bomb scene underwhelming. I'm sorry. I don't think we saw the same fucking film. That shit was intense as fuck. Yeah, that was a very intense. <laughs> that was it was very good how they showed it too, but I don't know why people think that. It was super freaking intense. But I don't know yeah. why people are complaining though cuz that's that's actually what it sounds like. Like you're not going to get a fucking Michael Bay explosion. That's not how real life works, man. Right, like no CGI, none of it. And it, it's honestly more impressive when it's all done without CGI. Didn't he actually drop a bomb on Red Cap? Because I remember somebody was saying that he actually like, used the legit bomb to film that scene. No, he did use like legitimate stuff to film that scene, but I don't know if he like created an actual <laughs> bomb. Christopher Nolan, truth is crap. I have to make a nuclear bomb. <laughs> Jesus. And now, I feel like there's only one true complaint you could really have about this movie. Outside of, of course, that little nitpick with the american flag because if you saw like there's like this um scene where oppenheimer's speaking and there were like people in the crowd waving american flags sadly the one with 50 stars was not invented until the later 1950s even though this that scene took place in the mid 1940s it's a very small error and i'm not gonna knock the movie at all for that error it's a, it's incredibly nitpicky but that's what i mean like the things that aren't historically accurate are basically just things that they didn't show, but we already knew about. Yeah. Or, just kind of stuff like that. Just very small errors. And, yeah, the only other issue is for, th- is it's a three-hour film, and yeah, you, you do feel the runtime here and there. You do. But, those are really like the only complaints I could possibly have about this amazing film. Yeah, I don't know. It is, it's not It's not hard to really nitpick for me because it is very long, but it's worth how long it is because of how good they spaced out. Like, it's good how they show the history where he was first uh, clumsy, not a good... He was a good student, but he was very clumsy, couldn't do anything in a lab, tried to, po- tried to do bad things to his teacher, but kind of regretted that. Everything's good now. Then he goes back to. Then he becomes a professor completely. And I love. There's a scene that makes me. It was a pretty great way they did it. Where it they did was they. If you first, uh, he was he went to his class and uh, a kid comes home over. A kid comes into the class saying, "Oh, I think I got the wrong class." No, you got the right class. Comes in, he sits down and he just starts talking, and he says, "And he's a good conversation." Then. In like maybe two seconds, he shows the class starts to grow, then grow, then just the whole class is filled up pretty much with people just learning from him. And then he gets good friends with some uh, one of his one of his professors next to him, like best friends. So I think it's great uh, storytelling is showing how his ideas. No one think his ideas was good. Then he became like the main portrayer of his own his idea. So I think that was a great scene to me, and I don't think there was anything I would say that's bad. The only thing I would say maybe the nitpick would be those, I mean, maybe those like t- I did see those American flag. You're talking about it was, that was a very tiny thing that it was very off the side. I would call it. So I don't think there's anything I could really nitpick from this movie from anything I've been just I watched myself. I do have one problem with the film, though. I don't think we got enough, like, character development for Jean. Because, yeah, she was, like, a communist, and she was a mistress to Oppenheimer. But, like, outside of that, what else do we know? She was suicidal. She depended on Oppenheimer for love or whatever. But, out of that, she was kind of, like, forgettable. Like, I don't know if there's, like, much to her, like, historically. But I I felt like she she was just kind of thrown in just for the drama. But I know it really did happen. But again, there wasn't any like character development, and I didn't really expect anything. Like she was just basically there for a plot tool to move the plot along with his affair and all that sort of stuff. And like, I think that, here's, that's a fair criticism. Like, here's the question though: How could have they really 
expand on that, you know? Like, how could have they really? Like, I, I know it's already three hours long, and it's kind of ridiculous, but they could have went into the backstory of, like, how she kind of became a communist, like, even, like, a brief scene or whatever, because she's the whole reason mm. why Oppenheimer kind of got introduced to this whole concept. Like, she just shows up, she's, like, a random waitress, Oppenheimer sleeps with this lady, and is like, all right, I like these ideas. And that's kind of it. And, like, I have this thing with her. But it wasn't, like, bad or anything. It was just kind of weird. Like, it felt kind of unnecessary. No. I will say this. It didn't really feel like he actually loved his wife all that much. Like, it felt like he was more connected to the commie mommy in a weird way. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that that is true. It it is very interesting. But to admit, his wife was very cold. Like, Jesus Christ. (laughs) I don't know, man. Yeah, she is. Like, there's a part, too, that where uh, I think it was, what was it? first, like, first she found out that he was cheating, cheating on her in, like, in front of, like, pretty much I would call the judges. And she got pissed off a little bit, but she's kind of a little bit uh, standoffish. Then there's a part where the guy's Taylor. Uh, he's betraying the trust of Oppenheimer, saying, uh, saying bad things to him, bad things about him. Then uh, he's got up, went to Oppenheimer to shake his hand. Oppenheimer said, Oppenheimer did shake his hand, but then when he came back, from, then they kind of went back, and then they kind of fast forward, saying, and then seeing the wife saying, you should have shaked his hand. And then uh, she threw a glass onto like the wall, like she's got pissed off that she, he, he like just shook his hand. Like he should have shaked his hand, and I think that was a great kind of scene, kind of showing that his wife, uh, kind of uh, going down like a downward spiral, kind of how she looked originally to like that scene where she went like she was like devolving. I'm gonna call it. So it was. I think that was a good scene to show about his wife. Also, too, what I like to add too that his wife isn't a good person either because she literally cheated on her first husband with Oppenheimer. So they're both equally as bad. (laughs) They're both shitty people. And you know what the messed up thing is too? Is like the fact that they had a child and they just said, you know what, fuck it, we can't deal with this. Let's just go to our friend and just give up the kid until we're ready. And that's a real friend Mm -hmm. right there because I know no damn person in their mind would have done that shit for anyone else. They're just like, this is your fucking child, you deal with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's all very fascinating stuff. At the end of the day, oh, it really is. And one last critique was the I don't know if it was my movie theater or not because I knew you and me went to the same place, Berman. But like there were some like audio issues, like when the some of the court scenes or the dialogues I couldn't hear them. It was like way mm. too quiet, and I don't know if that was intentional or not for the time. But you know, I just uh, I, at the time I need to rewatch this with subtitles or something in the future. Well, to be perfectly honest, I didn't hear anything of that. I think it's because maybe the movie theater you went. To, to like the different number because I went to like the big gigantic movie theater and it was clear as day. I could hear every conversation they were going to. I I think it was very clear for them for what they were talking about. I think it was just the movie theater in general. I think the sound and everything was perfect for how Oppenheimer is. Oh, and uh, one one last thing. I don't want to be too negative, but it just kind of made me cringe because it's just how stupid and over the top it was with his communist affair lady. Is that one scene where, where he's sleeping with her, and then she just randomly pulls out, like, this page is like, I have become the bearer of death, Oppenheimer. Now do me, as you read these lines in German. And I was like, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> that was so stupid. And that happens again, too, during an interrogation scene when Oppenheimer, like, gets interviewed by all the attorneys. But just out of nowhere, just him, like, imagining him banging his, his mistress in front of his wife as he's, like, getting sent to potential prison like just all two mm-hmm. are really out of nowhere like i get the meaning for it and it's very artsy but i just thought it was kind of hilarious and like just out of nowhere like it was just stupid but that that's about it i think interesting i think there's a part and i maybe i uh, kind of disagree on something too for that the first one where the book one that was kind of funny to me but it was it one it was not it was nick picking that one it was not german but it was a weird different random language but the uh, I think that part was just kind of funny to me that they did that. I think it was just showing how she was fascinated about her for some reason. Uh, number two, when they were like, he was getting interrogated, and the I think that scene 
was kind of showing the wife's pers- uh, perspective. That's showing that kind of his wife is seeing him, seeing him cheat on him right in front of her, pretty much. I think that's kind of how it's kind of showing that his wife, showing his wife's perspective of how he is cheating on her. And I think that's kind of showing, and it's, I think that's a good perspective to even show. I think that's how it's great to show this whole cheating between his wife and Jean. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much I don't, I don't really have much else to really say on this. Uh, anything else you guys want to say before wrapping this up? No, I would say this is going to be the best movie of the year. It's going to win that, too. I'm with Bourbon, too. It's definitely not for everybody, but again, if you like historical like documentaries and stuff, this is up your alley. But if not, I, I don't recommend it, because like I said previously, it's going to be 30 minutes of action and two hours of them like going back and forth in the courtrooms and whatnot. But it's really good. But if you can't like those kind of movies, then this is, this is a for you, Chief. Go watch, watch yeah. Barbie. Nobody get offended by the uh, by this comparison I'm going to make, because I actually kind of mean it in a complimentary sense. You know, like how Death Note has like little action, and it's like a lot of dialogue, yeah. and you know, it's like all that dialogue is like super interesting. That's kind of what like makes the film more interesting. I feel like Oppenheimer has that same thing going for it. Like, there's a lot of dialogue, but it's a lot of intriguing dialogue. Yeah, this one. So yeah, that's all we can really say. And yeah, go watch Barbie. Go watch Oppenheimer. Go watch whatever you want to watch. Just have fun in the cinema. Because there's a lot of stuff out right now. But yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Daniel. I've been Berman. I've been Chris. And we'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.